This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. And so our story continues. Last week, we heard the story of how Jesus fed 5,000 hungry people who had come to see him heal the sick and perform other miraculous feats. Now many from the same crowd want to see more. But guess what? Jesus is gone. He's left their presence. He's seen last heading towards the Sea of Capernaum. This dinnertime meal that these folks partook in, it piqued the interest that they had in this teacher even further. So they want more. They're craving more. They seek further signs so that they might believe that this man is the Son of God, the Messiah, the one who has come to be their king. Now, the group spots Jesus on the other side of the lake, and I would guess that a sense of relief kind of comes over all of them. Uh, there he is. Jesus, what are you doing on this side of the lake? Show us. Tell us. What other cool things can you do for us? Jesus is a bit disappointed in his followers. His hope is that people will follow him because of their belief in who he is, but not because he fed a, multi a multitude with five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus tells these people that they follow him because they want to see more amazing accomplishments, not because of the signs that they saw brought him, them to belief. So this is when Jesus decides to set the record straight. He tells them that people of God should not strive for physical things, but rather the eternal food that God provides. That's what we should be working for. That is the food we should be craving. Now, the movie, it's called Jerry Maguire, and the scene has become entrenched in our American culture. Now, sports agent Jerry, he's attempting to keep his one client, superstar football player Rod Tidwell, on his payroll. Jerry tries to convince Rod that staying with him will be the best option for him. Jerry, you know, he's just looking out for Rod and his family. He's going to secure his future with riches filled beyond belief. But Rod, he's not quite convinced. He needs to have proof that Jerry can come through with these promises. He needs proof that Jerry is the real deal. As Jerry pleads and begs over the phone for Rod to listen to him, to leave his word that it rings true, Rod responds to Jerry by shouting into his phone, Show me the money! Hey, Jerry, show me the money. This is kind of how the crowd is acting towards Jesus. Hey, Jesus, show us the money. Give us proof that we need in order to believe that your words are legitimate. Give us the proof that we need to believe so that we know that you are the Son of God. Give us proof that those promises you make, they're not empty, but rather they're overflowing with eternal riches. This band of followers can't believe Jesus' words straight up. They need more proof. They need to be reassured that this Jesus guy is who he says he is and that his promises will indeed ring true for each and every one of them. I kind of picture the crowd saying, Jesus, yeah, you, you fed us back there on the other side of the lake. It was great. It was filling. We appreciate it. But remember, Jesus, Moses was able to provide manna to the Israelites in the wilderness when they were out there moaning and groaning for food. Manna, it just kind of rained down from the sky. This was the bread of God. Why don't you do the same for us? Give us this bread of life. Provide it to us, and then we will believe. The crowd's reasoning is a bit twisted up. First of all, Moses didn't provide the Israelites with the manna. God did. Secondly, the manna was not the bread of God, but more of a symbol of the bread of God. As Jesus states to us in our gospel reading for today, Jesus is the true bread of life. Whoever comes to him will never be hungry. Whoever believes in him will satisfy his or her spiritual thirst. Jesus wants them to see that he brings much more to the table than Moses. He brings much more than a simple miracle when 5,000 were fed. Jesus is more than all of that. There was once a Sunday school teacher that wanted to use the image of squirrels for a lesson about being prepared and preparation in general. So she told the class that she would describe something and that they should kind of raise their hands in the air when they knew what she was talking about. So she started out by saying this. She said, what I'm thinking about, it lives in trees 
And sometimes it's gray, but other times it's brown. Absolutely no reaction from the class. She then said, okay, what I'm thinking about, well, it eats nuts and it also has a big, long, bushy tail. All the kids remain silent. Okay. What I'm thinking of, well, it makes kind of a chirpy sound when it gets excited and it likes to jump from tree to tree. One hand timidly went in the air. So the teacher called on that boy and the boy said, I know the answer must be Jesus, but it sure does sound like a squirrel. Yes, the answer is Jesus. Jesus is always the answer. If we want to live in communion with our God, then we must know Jesus. If we want to be fed and nourished spiritually with his bread of life, then we must know Jesus. If we want to be forgiven for our checkered past or poor decision making, then we must know Jesus. If we want to receive an invite to that great banquet in the sky one day, then we must know Jesus. I think that y'all are beginning to see and to recognize that Jesus is the answer to our questions. To know him is to know God. He is the bread of life that allows us to experience God's love firsthand and to recognize how gracious and merciful he can be. Jesus gives us the strength. Jesus is the one who opens our eyes to a world of new and exciting possibilities. Jesus is the one whom we live for as we turn to him to hear a word of promise and hope that will transform our lives. You see, Jesus isn't a magician with a pretty incredible act that creates feats that wow and amaze the crowd. Hey, look what I can do with all these bread and fish. Yeah, no, he's more than that. He doesn't come to us merely to produce signs and wonders, but rather to guide us home to a life with our God, a life that is exciting, it's productive, and it's rewarding. As we're taken off that beaten path of hopelessness and selfishness, and placed on the road of graciousness and kindness. You know, we can yell at Jesus all we want in our prayers to show us the money, to prove that he is who he says he is. But Jesus, he's the real deal. He doesn't have to prove a thing because he already has through the cross and the empty tomb. That right there, that is the money. No other signs are necessary. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you, so why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.